Well, welcome back to another power packed review session as you inch your way closer to that elusive 100 on the Regents exam, which I know so many of you are capable of. It's going to be a very exciting time in June to grade those exams. But uh, anyway, I want to focus, my main goal tonight is domain and range, but we're also going to sneak in a whole bunch of different things related to functions. And the first slide here, I want to just practice interpreting a graph of, of a random function that's been given to us. And um, so right off the bat here, they want us to evaluate f of negative 1. Now remember, whatever's inside the parentheses is your x value, okay? So they're asking me, when x is equal to negative 1, okay, what is the corresponding y value at that moment? And right here, the y value is 0. So uh, when x equals negative 1, y is 0. Over here, when x is equal to 1, let's see, right there, we're going to go up, we're going to hit the graph. The corresponding y value is a 4. And then when x is equal to 5, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the corresponding y value looks like negative 4. So let's just practice um, interpreting a graph and, and matching up the corresponding y values. Okay, next thing, evaluate f of 0. So when x equals 0, right here the y value is 3. So I could say f of 0 equals 3. And then what special feature on a graph does f of 0 always correspond to? Well, we could say whenever x is equal to 0, what you're finding is the curve's y-intercept, okay? And that's going to be true every single time. Uh, let's see, what values of x does the equation equal 0? So now um, I'm giving you the y-coordinate and asking you for the x-coordinate. Um, and I'm going to change colors. I'll start using blue. There's three different times when my y-coordinate is 0. So there's three solutions here. I would say when x equals negative 1 or when x equals 3, or when x equals, what is that, 4, 5, 6, it looks like 7 to me. Okay, what special feature on a graph does this x value always correspond to? Um, that's going to be the x-intercept, okay? So whenever you set y equal to 0, what you're doing is you're finding the x-intercept. And now here's a real tricky one. Between what two consecutive integers does the largest solution to f of x equals 3 lie? Now, what I'm going to do is I want you to try to draw a straight line across at y equals 3. So I'm going to go straight across here. And it looks like to me there's three solutions or three intersection points here. Now they wanted the largest solution. So I'm going to put my energy into this one right here. And they said between what two consecutive integers because maybe I'm, it may be getting a little chaotic but it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It looks like the x coordinate falls a little somewhere between 7 and 8. 8. might be a little closer to 8. looks like it might be 7.6 or 7.7, .7, but between which two consecutive integers, I'm going to say between 7 and 8. Well, in an effort for me to try to decipher how much that last slide made sense to you, I want you to try this, these four questions, A, B, C, and D, and I'm going to check these tomorrow in class. I'm going to come around and take a look at your notebook and see what your answers look like. Give me a little feedback as to how we're doing. Now we're going to graduate, we're going to start doing a composition of functions. What you'll notice here is that there is uh, two functions, one embedded inside of another. So we're going to evaluate these in order. Now, um, for k of negative 2, again, that's an x value. So we're saying when x is equal to negative 2 right here, the corresponding y value looks like negative 4. So I'm going to say k of negative 2 is actually negative 4, and now I need to evaluate h of negative 4. I'm going to back up 1, 2, 3, 4 right there, and the corresponding y value looks like negative 5. All right, h of 0. Again, we want to do 0 first. It's kind of like Chinese style. We're going to go from right to left. Part b is the exact same concept. It's just a little different notation than a. I could have written it as k of h of 0, uh, but just wanted to show you the two different variations. So h of 0, when x is 0, looks like the y value there is 1. So now we just do need to evaluate k of 1, and it looks like a, x equals 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It looks like it has a height of 5. So I'm just counting. All I'm doing is I, I found when x equals 1 right here, and then I counted up until I hit the y value, and I had a height of 5. All right, h of negative 2 looks like hmm, uh, negative 2. And if I evaluate, if I h of negative 2 again, I get negative 2. So not a real exciting one there. Last but not least, let's do k of negative 2, which is going to give me negative 4. So now I just need to evaluate k of negative 4. And if I go back 4 units, I'm right there, and I get a height of 0. 
Now, as we enter our discussion on domain and range, let's keep it as simple as we can. Now, the domain is the set of all possible x values that are legal substitutions into a function. And ultimately, what you're asking yourself is how far to the left does a graph extend and how far to the right does a graph extend? And I think we're pretty we're stronger doing it graphically than we are algebraically or, or analytically. And then our range is gonna be we're just asking ourselves, hmm, how far how low does the graph go and how high does the graph go? In other words, what's the lowest y and the highest y value I ever use? So let's take a look here. Uh, first things first, they said determine the minimum and maximum x values. So let's see, my minimum farthest left looks like negative one, two, looks like negative three for a min. And my max looks like, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like six for my max. Um, with regards to the minimum and maximum y values, my lowest point is right here, and it looks like one, two, three, four, negative five. And the maximum point is up here, and it looks like he's got a height of four. So my min and my max. Let's put it all together, my domain, now I'm going to cross off the set builder notation. I'm going to do it a little differently. Okay, I'm going to say all x values such that negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. And again, I have equal signs on those less than signs because those are closed dots. And then the range is all y values such that negative 5 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 4. So if you've been having trouble with domain and range in the past, I encourage you to ask yourself, part the questions in part A and B before you actually jump into domain and range you know what's the smallest x what's the biggest x and so on now you notice in the last side slide I said I thought we were much stronger at finding domain and range when we were looking at a graph so I want to practice the other half of that the, the half that I think we're a little weaker at and how do we do it analytically well on this particular slide I want to give you three rules to think of um, I'm going to give you a very generic function, 1 over ax plus b, and if they want the domain here, we would say the domain is all real numbers except for when the denominator is equal to 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the denominator and we're going to say it cannot equal 0, and then we would solve for x. Um, the other type of function I want you to look out for is a radical function. In this case, we're going to say whatever's inside that radical has to be non-negative, okay? And, and go ahead and put that in quotations, non-negative negative which basically means it can be zero or it's got to be positive positive. and so we're going to take that quantity and say it's greater than or equal to zero then solve and then the third type of function I want you to be familiar with is what if we put that same radical in the denominator now we're going to say that what's inside there has to be positive okay that's different than being non-negative believe it or not and we're going to say that that quantity ax plus b has to be greater than zero it's not allowed to be zero because it's in the denominator this time so those are the three things I want you to to really build confidence with and we're going to go practice each one of them so here's our first example we just have a very simple rational function expression here and what, what I'm going to instantly do is I'm going to say my denominator is not allowed to equal 0. In other words, 2x is not allowed to equal 10. In other words, x is not allowed to equal 5. So what is the domain? The domain is all x values within the set of real numbers, except x is not allowed to be 5. Anything other than 5 is a legal uh, number for x to be. Now I want to analyze that graphically. We could always type this function into our calculator. So I'm going to import that and we'll see what that looks like. Maybe a tougher graph to read, but what's happening here is there is a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 5. And that's the number we're saying x is not allowed to be. So anytime you uh, set the denominator equal to 0, what you're actually looking for are the asymptotes. Other than that, the graph is tough to see, but it does it. It hugs the x-axis and it extends infinitely to the left. And then on the other side, it does. It hugs the x-axis again and extends infinitely to the right. So it's all real numbers except for 5. So here's our second crazy function that we want to uh, tackle analytically and try to find the domain of. Uh, look at your notebook, what we wrote down a little while ago. We said if we have a radical in the numerator, we're going to take that inner function and we're going to say that it has to be non-negative. In other words, greater than or equal to 0. So 3x has got to be greater than or equal to 6. x has got to be greater than or equal to 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my domain right there. All x values greater than or equal to 2. Again, I'm going to import the graph and we'll analyze it graphically. So here's what my screen looked like, and you notice it does equal, it touches the x-axis right there at 2, and then extends infinitely to the right, and so you'll, you'll notice that I think our, our answer makes sense when we visualize it graphically, everything from 2 over to the right. 
Our last example tonight also has a radical, but this time the difference is the radicals in the denominator. So what we're going to say this time, and you can just refer back to your notebook, we said that inner function or that quantity has to be positive. It's greater than zero. And again, positive is slightly different than saying non-negative. And so 3x has got to be greater than negative 15. We're going to divide by a positive 3 so the sign stays the way it is. And we'll say x is greater than negative 5. There's my domain. Let's take a look at the graph. Again, this is kind of a fishy one to be able to see, but there's a vertical asymptote right here at, at negative 5. And then what happens is the graph just extends infinitely to the right and hugs the x-axis. So you'll see everything from negative 5 over to the right. Notice the graph never actually touches negative 5 because of the asymptote. It strictly approaches it, but never actually equals or touches it. So I encourage you if you, um, if you know, there's nothing that says you can't graph these every time. If you can plug them into your calculator and looking at the graph makes more sense, then I encourage you to do that. Otherwise, we'll just tackle it analytically using the three different methods I showed you.